Welcome to the next lecture on introduction to R software. You may kindly recall that in the earlier lectures, uh, we had learnt about how to do the basic mathematical operations in R like as addition, subtraction, multiplication, division as well as uh, this modulo operations. And uh, now we will move to some other aspects of R which are again the basic fundamentals of R. And in this lecture, I will try to tell you something about functions and a little bit about matrix theory and how to use matrix in R. And in the next lecture, I will try to complete a few other things about the matrix theory. Okay, so, uh, first basic question comes here, what is a function? Simple high school algebra and high school level concept. Whenever we write y is equal to f of x, we call that this is a function. So, here f means function and what is the meaning of this language y equal to f x? We try to say that y is something like output and x is something like input. This means, whenever I am trying to define a function, first I have to specify what is my here this f. For example, just for the sake of understanding, if I say f has a form x square, that means the function will become like y is equal to f of x which is equal to here x square. This means what? That as soon as I give here the values of x as input values, I will get here a particular value of here y as an output. For example, if I take say x equal to here 2, then y will become here 2 square which is equal to here 4. If I try to take here x equal to 3, then y becomes 3 square and this becomes here 9. Similarly, in case if I try to say define here another function suppose z which is a function of x and y. What does this mean? That simply that here there are two variables x and y which are your input variables and z here is your output variable. And f denotes here a function that is the form of the mathematical relationship of x and y with respect to z. So, for example, if I try to say that z is equal to x square plus y square. This means that in case if I give here some values of x and some values of y, then I will get here some value output as here z. So, for example, if I try to take here x equal to 1, y equal to 2, then I will get here z as 1 square plus 2 square which is equal to here 5. And similarly, if I try to take here x equal to 2, y equal to 3, then I will get here z is equal to 2 square plus 3 square equal to here 13. So, now what we have to understand that how are we trying to write down this function? I am trying to define here a function here as a here z which is equal to or equivalently in your R language I can write down here as a less than and hyphen sign and then I am trying to define here a f. So, let us try to write down here is completely as a function and then inside this argument I am trying to write down the input variables and so on. And then I try to calculate the value of output given here as a z. This is precisely what we do in R. There is only a particular type of syntax which is 
exactly based on this concept and we try to define a function. So now if you try to see here what is a function? Functions are simply a bunch of commands which are grouped together in a sensible fashion or a sensible way or a sensible unit. Suppose I want to find out x square plus y square then I have to write it in a separate in some several steps. First step will be give the value of x, second step will be give the value of y, next step will be find the value of x square, next step will be find the value of y square and finally find out the sum of x square and y square. So there are so many steps which are involved in finding out the summation of x square and y square. So when I try to group all these commands together that will simply become a function, right, okay. So functions have the same rule that we will try to write down here a function and then I will inside this one I will try to write down the input variable and then I need to define the form of the function. Whatever is the form of my function? those that many calculations will be made based on that I will get the finally returned output value. So this is the basic idea about the definition of a function and these functions can be a simple quantity or they can be some complex construction also like a list of several commands and so on. So what I am going to do here I will try to explain you that how do we write the function I will try to take few examples but after that I will request you that please try to create some more function yourself and practice them. Okay, so now what is the syntax? The syntax is very very simple here you have to give the name which is an output variable and then you have to write function then inside the brackets you have to write down all the input variables which are separated by comma and then once this bracket is closed over here then you have to make here a curly bracket here and here and in between you have to write down here all the expressions whatever you want to compute and this will become a function. Once I can write down the function, then I will tell you how I can do the calculation by calling a particular function. The advantage of the function is that, that whenever we are trying to write down a complicated command or a complicated program, then I can divide my entire program into several smaller units and every unit will be written as a function and when I want to operate the entire program, I will try to call these functions which will give me the supplementary values and finally I will try to manipulate with those functions to give us the final outcome. And that is one of the very important aspects of R programming and because of which R has become a very popular language, right, okay. So now few points to remember. Whenever you are trying to give here an, uh, some variable name inside the function arguments, always try to give a proper name which has some meaning so that you can identify by their name that whatever you are going to do. For example, if you are trying to deal with age and weight, so then in case if you ask me, I will try to give a function name as age and here weight, right. And the function arguments can be set to default values as well as you can give, give your own values also. And beside those things, functions can also have some special type of arguments which is given inside the inverted commas. So that we will try to now see with uh, say this several examples how we are trying to do it. Suppose I simply want to compute a function y equal to x square. That means I would give it a value here x 
and based on that I will I want to write a program that will give me output as a square of my input value. So, what we can do that first of all I have to define a name of the function. So, let us call that suppose I give the function a name abc. Now, you can see in this function what are my input variables? Input here is x and what is here your f? This is equivalent to here x square. So, now you have to observe how I am trying to write down this function. On the command prompt, first of all I write the name of the function abc and after that the equality sign like this one or less than hyphen sign and then I am writing exactly the same word function f u n c t i o n and then here inside this bracket I am trying to write down the input values. So, now there is only here one input variable x. So, I am writing here only x in case I have more than one input variable then I will try to write down all the input variables separated by comma and now I write down this opening curly bracket and I try to write down the form of the function which is here x square and then when I am done when I am uh, when I am finished with all my commands then I will try to close it by this curly bracket right and this will give me a complete function. So, let us try to first uh, do it on the R and let us try to see how one can do it. So, if you try to see over here I have written here ABC less than hyphen sign which is a or C equality sign function bracket then inside the bracket there is input variable x and now on the next line I will try to write down the form of the function which is here x square and then I will try to write down here this curly bracket which is indicating that I am done with my function. Now, there are no more commands to be executed. So, now you can see here once I get this prompt sign that means I am I have completed my function. So, now if you try to see here if you try to type abc over here you can see here what is the form of the function right. Now, after this suppose I want to execute this program and suppose I want to input a value x equal to 2 and corresponding to which I want to know what is my outcome. So, what I have to do I have to write down the function name abc and and inside this bracket I have to give my input values for example, I am taking here x equal to 2. So, this will be written like abc and inside the bracket 2 and as soon as I enter you will see that I have got the value here 4 because the square of 2 is 4. Similarly, in case if I want to know any other value say say when x equal to 5 we know the square of 5 is 25. So, let us try to enter and you can see here that I have obtained the same value and similarly in case if I want to find out any square of any other value something like this a more complicated value you can see here this is here. So, you can see here that by writing a function I can write a small program right. So, now let us try to come back to our slide and we continue with our slides. One thing I would like to say inform you here that whenever I am trying to write down the function then inside the bracket I have to give the input values input variables. This input variables can be one value or this can be more than one value also right. So, we will try to see it in the next example. So, now suppose I have here a function say a b c which is equal to x square plus y square. Now, I would like to write down this function. 
So, the rule is simple that I will try to define here a function name, then I will try to write down the equality sign, then I will try to write down here the function. Now, inside this bracket, I will try to give all possible input variables, whatever are being used in computing the function. Then I would start writing the commands inside this curly brackets. And here I try to write down here x hat 2 plus y hat 2 that is x square plus y square. And this is my another function. So, let us try to do it here in the R program itself. So, now let us try to type this command over here and on the next line I will try to write down here x square plus y square and I will try to close it by here a curly bracket. Right. So, now you can see here this is my here function abc. Now, I want to find out its value when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to here 3. So, now I am trying to find out the value of 2 square plus 3 square this is nothing but 13. Similarly, in case if I want to find out the square of 124 plus a square of say 786, you can get this values over here. So, it is simply trying to compute the 124 square plus 786 square, right. Now, and then you can see here that uh, I have computed here some more values over here. So, you can also try these values in your on your uh, uh, computer to have some more practice and here you can see this is the screenshot whatever I have done it uh, here. Right. Similarly, I have uh, made here another example that I am trying to write down here another function here a b c which is a b c is equal to say sin square x plus cos square x plus here x. Right. We know that sin square x plus cos square x is equal to here 1. So, let us try to write down this program and can see what really happens over here. Right. So, so we try to write down this function over here, say function x and then I would try to write down here sin x square plus cos x square plus x and then I will try to close this function. So, you can see here that this a b c now here is another function which is given by like this. And now, if I want to find out the a b c of here 8 that is obviously cos square 8 plus sin square 8 that is 1 plus x that is 1 plus 8 that is equal to 9. And similarly, if you want to find out the say a b c of 5 6 7 this comes out to be 5 6 8. So, now you can see here that writing down the program is not uh, difficult at all, but it uh, is a very strong tool in our software that gives us an edge over many other software by writing this function. The next topic which I am going to take uh, is about matrix theory. Matrix theory we all are aware that uh, matrix is simply a rectangular array which has got certain number of rows say p number of rows and certain number of columns say n number of columns. And this matrix is denoted by something like this or sometimes this is denoted as something inside this bracket and it has got certain elements which are denoted by uh, whose address are denoted by the, the ith row or, or the gth column. So, in uh, the bookish language this uh, the ith element of the matrix say here x is denoted by x i j or in the program version this is denoted by this x inside the bracket I would try to write i comma j. Right. So, and uh, now the element of a matrix can be an object this can be a string, but in mathematics and statistics usually we are interested in in the matrices which are uh, containing essentially the numerical values. So, in this uh, lecture also initially we are going to concentrate only on those matrix which have got some numerical values. So, the first thing is this suppose I want to create a matrix, how I can create a matrix from a given set of data. 
So, first let us try to take some example and later on I will try to uh, show you that what are the complete commands for writing a matrix. Suppose I have got some data 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and I want to arrange this data in a matrix of order 4 by 2. This means that there are going to be 4 number of rows which are denoted by here n row and there are going to be 2 number of columns which are denoted by here n call. So, first 2 entries n row and n call they are trying to tell us the number of rows and number of columns in the matrix. So, as soon as I define a matrix first of all I have to give the matrix a name. So, I have given the matrix a name x and my objective is now to write this set of data 1 to 8 in a matrix of 4 by 2. So, I can write it as a x equal to or say less than hyphen sign then I have to write here matrix m a t r i x and then I have to write down here these two brackets and inside this bracket I have to give all the information that how I want to write my matrix. There are going to be 4 rows, 2 columns and this is the data which I want to be in my matrix. So, when I try to do so and when I try to enter it we get here an outcome like this one. Right. And the same thing I can show you here also uh, doing with here R that I try to define here a matrix here by this thing and something like this and you see here x comes out to be like this. Right. Okay. So, you can now see here that now this is coming out to be a matrix of order 4 by 2, but you have to keep in mind how the data has been arranged 1, 2, 3, 4 and from here 5, then 6, then 7 and then 8. The data is arranged in column wise 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 5, 6, 7, 8. Now, there is another issue that if I want to arrange this data in a row that means 1, 2, 3, 4 and then 5, 6, 7, 8 that means I have that I am interested in having a matrix of order 2 by 4 in which the data is going to be arranged in the form of here column. Right. So, that also uh, can be done, but before that let me try to explain you what are the different parameters involved in the argument. Here this n row is trying to define the number of rows in a matrix, n call is trying to define the, the number of columns in a matrix and the parameter data that is going to assign the specified values to the element in the matrix. Right. And the default approach is that, that, that the elements are written column wise just like this. And now suppose this is the matrix that we have obtained in the earlier screen and suppose I want to obtain a particular element. Suppose I want to element in the second column and third row. So, this is nothing but your x 3 2. So, this is obtained by writing say here x and inside this is square brackets. Now, you are not going to use the simple brackets, but you have to use here the square bracket and inside this bracket you have to write down the address. The address here is third row and second column and as soon as you try to write it down you get here the value here 7. For example, here you can see here that suppose I want to write down here x 3 2 I get here 7. And similarly, if I try to write down here x 1 1, I get here the first element that is here 1. Now, suppose if I want to enter the data row wise, then I have to write down the same syntax from here to here, what I did earlier. But now, I have to write down here by row, this is equal to here capital T R U E, that is true. Right. And once you try to do it here, then you will get this type of outcome where you can see that the data is arranged like 1, 2, then 3, then 3, then 4, then 5, then 6, then 7, then 8. Right. And let us try to do it here inside the R software also. So, 
So now you can see here that I have got this type of data over here. And now you can see here this was uh, means earlier matrix were arranged column wise, but this is arranged row wise. Right. So, this is the similarly the, the outcome of uh, when I entered the same data row wise and column wise. So, you can see here that uh, here there was a hidden command this was written by row which was equal to here false. So, this we will try to understand when we try to discuss the complete command of this uh, matrix theory and uh, we will try to discuss some more aspect of this matrix. The idea of giving you some basic knowledge that how to write a matrix in R was given in this lecture. Now, my request is that please try to have a revision of all these topics, particularly the matrix theory and in the next lecture, we will try to discuss some more aspects of matrix theory. And I would also request you that uh, please try to have a quick look in any elementary book on matrix theory, whatever you have done in your high school level or class 12 level, whatever you have done that will help you in the next lecture. Till then, goodbye.